the theory plus uh, mathematics actually is not only theory actually so everything is related so let me show you that what we did yesterday actually uh, i hope you can see that yes sir yes sir right so this is uh, uh, i am just showing my i don't know whether you can understand my handwriting or not but uh, i hope it's somewhat uh let me zoom it actually that would be much more better Uh, yeah you can see that so we were actually we were trying to do the means uh, this momentum balance right in rectilinear coordinates so first we are doing the rectilinear coordinate and later on we will do for cylindrical coordinate so this is what you already know that force is the rate of change of momentum actually the linear momentum change is called force actually so that's what you have here so p is actually the linear momentum the linear momentum can be calculated uh, velocity into mass and if you have several particles or let's say differential mass of uh, differential volume so you individually package of that all package corresponding velocity keep on multiplying and adding you will get total momentum of the system actually now again the force is as is also being told to you uh, to your taught to us actually in the beginning mass into acceleration only so therefore you have here that df equal to dm db upon dt so this db upon dt is actually is your uh, acceleration actually so total acceleration of fluid particles so we the small d we have converted to the capital d because that we have converted into the material derivative or substantial derivative or total derivative uh based on that you got this is the acceleration of the particle if you have velocity vectors so you will have x component of velocity y component z component and a disturbance due to uh, unsteady state characteristic that is del v upon del t last term that is called local acceleration so this is the means another expression for force so you have two x so one have force from this side and another one is from that side actually that dp upon dt now this i have shown to you already that we have taken a differential volume uh, of this dimension dx dz and dy and at the center as i told that uh, these are the surfaces so uh, these surfaces will have uh, will be at the forces either may be parallel to the surface or may be perpendicular to the surface no matter what direction you are applying force from outside let's say you are uh, applying force inclined so it will give two component one is parallel to the surface one is the normal to the surface if you are directly applying perpendicular to that it means you are just uh, uh, having a compressive force if you are just uh, pulling it then you have a I um, mean, expansion force. So, if you are just parallel, you have a shear force. So, all of all the time is being applied at the surface. So, for this derivation, what we did the stresses at the center we considered the sigma x x, say tau y x and tau z x. That's what we have the mention here because first we want to do what is the net force in only in x direction because we don't want to uh, put all three in one side because then the number of variables would become too much and it will be become very hard to understand in the beginning actually so that's what we have taken in that side at the center this one the sigma xx because wherever your uh, uh, see in this case this uh, if you are talking about this uh, uh, this actually your uh, right side so here perpendicular is going to x side and direction of force is also going to x axis so both are x axis the your plane and direction both are x axis so therefore it has converted to the sigma because that will give the normal stress so normal stress would be 
either uh, normal stress is just called pressure only so that's what is being uh, changed to sigma only rest of the surface is this side direction is this but plane is y so you have will get shear only okay so that's where you have all other surfaces would have shear forces only this x plane would have the normal forces only that's what those x side one being converted to the sigma only so this i explained to you and then uh, uh, we wrote all these down the normal stress on left side so y tilde in means of expansion and then you have the right side one and uh, then you have a top side top on y uh, means uh, top plane so you have plane is y direction is x therefore the first is plane next is direction there so next part is direction always so this is what do you have to define your normal place and not you cannot write any way y x z x no first is always plane second one is direction only same thing bottom one you wrote here then you wrote actually the front one front is front to this monitor and a back one so you wrote all of them then finally you have added all surface forces in x direction there so you added all surface forces uh, uh in left right top bottom front and back so you added all of them and based on that you got this equation the all the surface forces is the sigma x x or del sigma x x upon del x delta y x upon del y delta z x upon del z dx dy dz so that's what you got in the last class after that because you want to calculate net force so this is the surface force the every system would have its own body weight so body weight as we know it acts always in downward but we don't know what our, our orientation is body is let's say body is inclined so body weight is this side so some component would be in x side some component would be in y side maybe in that in that side so you will have some component z side also so uh, body multiply by let's say cos theta sin theta will give you the corresponding component in x y z direction so therefore if you want to calculate net force in direction x so it would be a net force in direction x by body weight plus net force by surface forces in direction x so therefore you got two component uh, dbx and dfx so dbx is just from body weight so body weight is just mass so density this is the volume actually dx divided by dz and into gx so component of g in that particular direction so this is the body weight component direction x and these are all the surface forces so you add them up you got now the total force now you balance from your previous one so same thing can be done for y direction so for y direction mein kya hoga jo aapka last coordinate hai this one this one this last coordinate here you have x x na so this the last coordinate you just change it by y only everything would change automatically to y coordinate only means y direction force balance so here you change this y this also would be changed to y this also would be changed so so your second x would be changed by y only so you will get for same thing for y direction forces similarly you can uh, so y direction if you will do the balance you will get this one by direction the surface force same way you can do for surface force in z direction so it will complete your all your x y z okay so yes, now now this is your uh, i mean expanded picture of your control volume okay sari surfaces ko aapne alag kar diya dur se so this is how it will the look like so this is your uh, actually your uh, right side one so right side uh, it has a uh, if you are balancing the force in, uh, means the the stress in direction x it is becoming the sigma if you are finding it y direction it will become tau x y if you are doing in z direction it will become tau x z so uh, now is plane pe you have all three you have component in x direction you have in y direction z direction these are the three component at each plane so here plane is x x is the plane because perpendicular is going to direction x but directions are now three if you are doing x balance you have the sigma x x if you are doing y balance you have tau 
x y. If you are doing z balance, you have tau x z. So these are the three stresses at one particular plane. Same thing you will get on this uh, right side one. The right side one also you will get the same thing. Okay, then you will get on top side same thing again. Top side also you will have three component. One is in y direction, one is in uh, uh, x direction, one is in z directions. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. So that way you are the defining your the direction. Now you would come to know how uh, this thing has burnt down. Ye wala niche kyu chala gaya? You might have the notices, na? Okay, yahan pe ye wala oh, this tau y axis is up. Now here tau y axis is down. Can you tell me why? Why is it so? Directions actually you uh, would be calculated by long time back as I told you previously. Directions need to be calculated by two things. One is your magnitude of shear stress which you are going to calculate. So it is that tau you are calculating mu dv upon d or du upon dy, right? That's why the Newton's law of the mean the viscosity. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right, so calculate two things. One is its magnitude, one is its direction, right? Direction of the plane or motion. So direction of plane, actually, uh, so uh, once you have directions and uh, magnitude, both are having same sign, the magnitude, uh, the total direction would be plus. If magnitude and directions are different, then it will become minus. That's where you are, uh, finalizing it. So you can think it, uh, then you will come to know what is happening in that particular part. So these are all six surfaces. Every surface would have three components. So total are how many components? Total are how many? 18. 18. So 18 may, uh, uh, some are overlapping. Sigma XX, Tau XZ, so total will lucky it will become half of that nine actually. So nine by nine is stress tensor ban jayega ye nine by nine matrix actually. Okay, so that I am not uh, confusing you by the tensor term. So just leave the tensor. So uh, once you did X balance, so you uh, did a body weight, you did a surface force. So this part is being done in the last class here. So you got this. So now we will to start again for that part again. Now, same thing for Y component, you, you will get same thing for Z component. So this you got in terms of the, the means the stresses, this is your force balance in direction. Now question is that we cannot measure the stresses in any fluid easily because there are no uh, simplified technique to the, we can measure, but not a simplified techniques. So our idea as an engineer or all other thing we want to convert every formulation in a simplified way where we can do the direct measurement. So these stresses, we want to convert it in terms of velocity because velocity is the only thing which can, we can, we have the several techniques to measure them much more accurately actually. So therefore these the stresses we are converting to other measurable property. So what you have here first, that this is your force mass into acceleration. So you wrote the acceleration in terms of velocity. This is your left side. Right side, right side you have uh, this one. This I want to show that from where uh, uh, this is coming. So right side uh, you have these components, right? The rho g x. Uh, sigma del x upon uh, uh, sigma uh, del sigma x x upon del x del tau y x upon del y. Uh, this I want to show that uh, how uh, would it be calculated to you because the this part you already know from here from backside. Only thing this uh, uh, 
sigma x x tau by x tau z x we need to we were doing last class and some of you had tried so only question is that from where the sigma came tau by x is uh, being explained to you based on your newton's law of viscosity so there were no confusion in that so newton's law of the viscosity let's say you are talking about one dimensional flow so your newton's law of the viscosity is given by this only that tau by x is equal to du upon dy this is only for one dimensional now it is for a uh, three dimensional plane so every time you have two plane x or y y or z or z or x so you will have two stresses in that so therefore your tau y x or tau x y would be given by this mu del v upon del x or del u upon del y okay so this is the net stress of tau x y or y x in x y plane same thing for z y plane same thing for z x plane now this uh, i gave you this one so this is the normal actually mean that stresses need to be calculated from here the thermodynamic pressure uh, this is from so, this ha huh. sir is shear stress wale formula mein huh. opposite coordinate kyun aaya denominator mein jaise del uh, u yeah so if you are moving in this side uh, so uh, you want to calculate the shear stress so shear would be apply on a surface so if you want to move this side your plane is y yes or no yes sir right so if you want to move upside your plane is x so therefore your velocity will change with respect to x coordinate not in the in terms of y coordinate if you are moving this side you are moving in this side so if you have the surface the surface is only this side so this surface would have the shear only not this surface so okay sir okay so the uh, your velocity your the, the stresses would be on the plane so uh, if you want to move in this side so your plane is x if you want to move in this side your uh, plane is y because you are the moving on y plane right so that way your uh, uh, this coordinate comes in, in that way your the direction and the and the another coordinate which is uh, perpendicular to the motion only fine yes sir okay now there was a question here the from where this came so i am just trying to explain if i can and uh, mr explain you well so this uh, explanation of these terms you have this you have the thermodynamic pressure here so this is being calculated based on density and the temperature and uh, and, and then you have your uh, uh, gas laws for that your the means the calculation equation of the the state van der waal equations and pang robinson equations those will be taught to you in the thermodynamics actually now suppose this is true whatever is the mention here based on that we were trying to drive it first so let's drive it first so at the place of the sigma we have put that value here uh, at the place of this uh, 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 this is what term here tau yx so you have put here you have here tau zx so you have the uh, substituted here so i ask you to drive it i was also trying to drive it in the in that particular class so if you will substitute here and do it uh, here you will get in this particular term you have just arranged the term uh, in that particular way so th this equation at this particular time is called navier's stokes equation actually at this particular time all these were okay these are called momentum equations and in short these are called navier's stokes equations so this was the name of the scientist they drive it actually after that we want to calculate what this term is del dot v vectors so i want to explain you this that uh, uh, how means uh, how this term will be calculated there so we wrote uh, the means the again the constant here for incompressible flow with constant viscosity we have put a constraint that incompressible means density is constant 
so we want to do the change in previous one a big constant viscosity also so in previous one what you have here so this viscosity will come out outside the differential sign you talking about incompressible flow so from incompressible flow you have the continuity so this term will come from continuity your del dot v term would come equal to zero so do you remember the continuity yes sir so in that case for the incompressible fluid that comes del dot v equal to zero so this term will get cancelled viscosity term from all these term will come out outside of the differential sign then we can uh, rearrange all of them and finally you will end up with this equation actually that mu del square u upon del x square plus del square u upon del y square and del square u upon del z this is for your momentum balance in direction x okay this is your momentum balance in direction x only same way you can write for direction y or direction z now this is your continuity right this is your continuity in the rectilinear coordinate we drive long time back that del rho upon del t or rho del u upon the del x rho del v upon del y rho del w upon del z we derived it in previously the continuity in a differential coordinate right now if you want to change it for incompressible fluid it means density is constant so your first term will get cancelled density will come out from here so you will finally uh, end up a term del u upon del x plus del v upon del y plus del w upon del z equal to 0 now del all del can be converted into the del operator so you will get finally a del dot factor b from here okay yes sir so uh, similarly uh, this part i will show you the later actually the mean the derivation in the cylindrical coordinates so uh, uh, i just want to show you that the thermodynamic the pressure thing so finally you will end up with this was this was the thing i was talking to you the just now for constant de uh, density fluid uh you will get this so you take the del common so finally you will end up this and this term can be the represented by del dot vector b equal to 0 in terms of mathematics now we were talking this so uh, i will ask you also if you can have the access to this book that uh, analysis of transport phenomena by william m dean so this gives the derivation of this the sigma actually so in this sigma is being the actually defined by two terms here that p uh, into i plus tau tau is the shear viscous shear stress and uh, p is your thermodynamic one pressure and then if you add then that then you that is called your total stress actually at a particular plane or a particular point now how this sigma is being calculated again sigma is equal to pi for a static fluid because the the static fluid you don't have shear force component right so your tau will vanish there okay so now you have there a derivative term at that particular place so you are putting del dot here the sigma so you just put del here also in previous time you have a tau you have also put here del upon tau again so you got del sigma equal to del p plus del dot tau so finally you can change your continuity equations from this way that uh, uh, your force balance equal to rho db upon dt equal to so this is the another way to the represent actually your momentum balance so i will end the momentum balance on x plane here so further if you want to read that particular term uh, sigma thing you can read that one and uh, so far also i don't understand much from there so you can also try it so again this tau is being calculated by this 2 mu upon the sigma for the newtonian fluid this expression is also given in that particular textbook now what is this 
this is called actually uh, this is total means the, the stress here so this you have del dot b and b dot transport of that so this again you can uh, put here and that and that time you got the term here one by three here so this is totally from mathematics so you just try to drive it if you can do it kuch ho sakta hai मेरे भी समझ में नहीं आया अब तक एक्चुअली आई ऑलवेज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट सो स्टिल आई विल ट्राई एक्चुअली टुडे आई विल अगेन गो थ्रू इट वंस एक्चुअली सो मीन द अगेन यू विल हैव दिस फ्रॉम हियर वन बाय थर्ड केम एक्चुअली हियर दिस इज दर साइंटिस्ट बैचलर हियर इन इज पी एच डी थिस uh he drive that uh, p the normal stress is always one third of total stress is presented on all three plane actually and uh, and then they end up with this particular formulation the normal stress finally is given by this uh, minus p 2 uh, 2 mu del u upon del x k uh, minus 2 by 3 mu again del dot b actually so we will end this part here actually so this is what i have uh, taken here this k is the dilation viscosity uh this uh, term is local rate of the deformation the deformation of the fluid and that this is identity tensor so vectors and tensor i don't teach in the ug curriculum actually so you can probably leave this term here actually so i will come back to the our class part here so finally we have derived this one okay so with this uh, uh, in the yesterday's class and today's class finally we have derived a nervous stock equations uh for a Uh, differential element and in uh, for a for a fluid which is incompressible or incompressible fluid okay New newtonian fluid newtonian means viscosity is constant you have also put one more constant incompressible fluid and this is your these are your momentum balance equations for x y z coordinate fine yes sir now let's see what are the applications of these that's is the next important part why we drive it what are the use of that uh now if you want to change this let's say you have a ideal fluid so uh, what will happen in case of ideal fluid or uh, ideal fluid or let's say inviscid fluid inviscid fluid what so, would be the, what would be the property viscosity, viscosity would be nearly equal zero. to zero only so this term that mu term in all these three will get cancel so you will end up with this one uh this one you will end up this so you will get uh, rho del u upon uh, del t u del u upon del x v del u upon del y w del u upon del z equal to minus del p upon del x plus rho gx so these are called euler uh, equations so euler so equations means this is again your momentum equations but for incompressible inviscid flow you have added one more term in the previous one inviscid flow means viscosity is tends to zero so you don't have any viscous dissipation term now if i change something here further if i make it steady state what will happen in that case if i just make one more term steady states this term will get cancel first one yes sir yes sir yes so first term will get cancel so i will have with term here u del u upon del x b del u upon del y w del u upon del z equal to minus del p upon del x plus rho g x suppose i want to make further constraint on that let's say i am talking about one dimensional flow only only in x direction so what will happen in x direction flow 
डीडब्ल्यू भी जीरो हो जाएंगे एक्स डायरेक्शन लेट्स से आई एम टॉकिंग ओवर एक्स डायरेक्शन फ्लो एंड लेट्स से फुल्ली डेवलप्ड फ्लो फुल्ली डेवलप्ड फ्लो इन डायरेक्शन एक्स ओवर ए वाई प्लेन ओवर ए प्लेन वाई फ्लो इन दिस साइड फुल्ली डेवलप्ड फुल्ली डेवलप्ड मींस इफ यू विल मूव फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर either you calculate velocity here or here or here or here is not getting changed that's called a definition of fully developed flow so from this actually your term few terms will get cancelled if you are talking about x direction your this del u upon the del x term will get cancelled because you are talking a term fully developed flow velocity will not change in this side that also you have a constraint from your streamline flow what does it say one minute so streamline what does it say स्ट्रीमलाइन कुछ कहता है हेलो हेलो स्ट्रीमलाइन स्ट्रीमलाइन से दैट व्हाट डिज से वेलोसिटी वेक्टर Tangential to the yeah. direction of the flow, right? That is one thing. How does it change? That is not being taught to you that time. How the velocity changes? The tangential, I have told you. That's fine. Let's do from here. Now, I will show you with the help of figure only. Let's say you have this. We want to drive it Bernoulli equation. So Bernoulli equation. What do you do? uh you take a streamline yes or no that's what you have yes, here sir. so this is the the means that this blue line is the streamline is going in this side now out of that we have just taken a differential section of that of length ds is pure streamline we have taken a section of ds length this is this one now this also we have considered we have taken as some thickness of that particular the, the stream line actually or of that area of that is let's say da area of this is da this side so what you have here so you have two surfaces one is this end what is that end which will have some pressure there so let's say at this particular point you have pressure is p area is da so you got a pressure force here Now this surface again would have the pressure, so you have P plus dP, and the area is again same dA. So these are the pressure force on both the surfaces. One is this side, one is that side. Now this uh, particular uh, the streamline which you have taken of length dS area dA would have some its weight also, which is W, which is W here, which will act at the center only. So W is the weight of this particular stream uh, tube. Can say that over time, stream tube was the line action. This weight will act W. Let's say its inclination from um, uh, uh, from vertical, the axis, the change in theta is this. Okay. So and your direction is uh, taken in this side here. So you have here this is your x coordinate and this is your z coordinate. We have taken. There. Okay. Here everything is fine. That uh, we are just doing only x, y, z, and where these components are acting. Is this fine? Everything here. Till here, till here. Yes, Let's sir. Let's see what I have next. We want to do the force balance in direction of flow. Fine. We want to do the force balance in direction of flow. So force balance is df. We are talking about the differential mass. Into acceleration, that is your force balance. Correct or not? Yes, it's correct. 
Yes, sir. Right. Now you have force balance. You have this side pressure. उस साइड से भी कुछ प्रेशर आ रहा है सो दिस साइड प्रेशर पी डी ए दैट साइड प्रेशर दिस साइड सो यू हैव माइनस ऑफ दैट पी इंटू प्लस डी पी इंटू डी ए बॉडी वेट बॉडी वेट ऑलवेज एक्स डाउनवर्ड डब्ल्यू एंड इस कंपोनेंट इज गोइंग टू दिस साइड कॉस 90 माइनस थीटा नाउ यू वांट टू बैलेंस इट टू द इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फ्लोस देयर फॉर यू पुट ए माइनस साइन हियर माइनस डब्ल्यू कॉस 90 माइनस थीटा इज दिस फाइन This is the body weight. Should be balanced by mass into acceleration. So dm acceleration is called dB upon dt only. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Fine. Yes. Simplify it. So simplify it. If you will do that, you will get the next line here, and and from here at the place of dB, I just converted this into this form. db upon ds multiply by ds upon dt i can do this way yahan to koi dikkat nahi this is just a mathematics okay yes, i did this way now uh, at this place uh, at ds upon dt distance upon time is called what velocity only yes sir so i just got the another line here that minus dp da Uh, minus W sine theta dm v into dv upon ds. Now, what is my sine theta from the previous figure? I will get dz upon ds from here. Sine theta from here, dz upon this is your ds, right? ये वाला आपका ds है. So I will get sine theta. Dm I want differential mass, so I uh, I have the area, I have the length. So ds into da is the volume. Multiply by density is my mass dm. Multiply by g would would provide me the dw. So I have the everything whatever I need to be the substituted in this equation, right? Correct. Yes, sir. So if I substitute that back here, so I will I am getting this equation. Now I am the dividing this by ds and da. So if I the divide it. I am getting this equation. Rearrange it. So I am getting v dB upon ds to b upon this. Uh, I just put a factor of two here, and then uh, dB upon ds, and finally I will end up with this one by two dV square upon ds. I can do that way. Here I yes. have v dB upon ds. I just multiply two. Uh, Up and down, and then uh, I got here two b. So two b I can get if I have inside the bracket b square term, right? So I got this the half d b square upon d s. Now from three and four substitute them. I'll, I'm getting this equation now minus d p upon d s minus rho g d z upon d s and rho d b square upon d s. So everywhere you have d s. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now integrate for your the streamline. Integrate along the streamline. So if I put the integration sign over the entire term, and I am integrating along the the streamline. So my total length of the 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 streamline was just ds only. So I just multiply everywhere ds here, here also ds, here also ds. So if I do that, I am getting this, and uh, finally I am ending with this minus p minus rho g z rho b square upon two g plus a constant. So this is your, this is what your Bernoulli equation is. Okay. So yes, this is the one of the derivation of your Bernoulli equation. Let's say another thing. What else can be done for uh, derivation? What Bernoulli Constraint we did. You already know the sum of the constraint because Bernoulli is the thing which is most frequently being used in fluid mechanics, where you have the motion of the fluid. Uh, no matter how genius, how expert a teacher or a professor, researcher, everybody is, initial calculation everybody is doing from Bernoulli only because this will give the idea what should be my value in a 
in a uh, most general case because i am neglecting everything i am just talking about the ideal way so this is the first starting calculation then we put some uh, further complication and uh, all this just to go close to reality actually so maximum focus is always given on what only application actually what are the constraint we have we have put a constraint here steady flow first incompressible frictionless flow flow along the the streamline these are the uh, constraint we have put all these here actually now it is applicable on siphon the siphon you might have uh, seen a round pipe jo aap kahin bhi turn kar sakte hain as a round pipe actually siphon you might have seen uh, i hope punjab mein i have not seen people have a long plastic pipe and they roll it wherever they want and they lay down that pipe in their farms just to water the various various parts of their farm actually that is called a siphon or a small pvc tube le lijiye flexible one usko aap jab you can bend it in any any jagah direction actually so it is applicable in that particular part also subsonic nozzles also pressure drops also so you can usually apply at that particular point there your friction effects are negligible in that way constraint are this keep in mind the first four constraint steady incompressible frictionless flow these are the constraint let's see application where it is not applicable first thing as we say in the first beginning there we were talking about mac number that gaseous flow and all this and then we gave a question also in quiz and gave a wrong choice there less than 1 so one of you were arguing that time less than 1 could be any value that's right 0.99 is also less than 1 0.98 is also less than 1 0.5 is also less than 1 but exact answer is less than 0.3 actually so gaseous flow can also be calculated or treated uh, with bernoulli if your mac number is coming less than 0.3 then you can see that density variation is not much in that particular gases actually hydraulic pump uh, whatever pump you have any pump inside the pump you don't have any flow patterns because you are providing excess energy to the fluid you don't have a streamlined flow pattern in the pump so bernoulli is not applicable on the pump you will have a pipeline you have a pipeline here just like a pan let's say this cap is a pump so you can apply your bernoulli from here to here but not in this cap because this is a pump here you don't have a streamlined flow pattern so you will always skip the pump actually so inside the pump bernoulli is not applicable so you can apply on a straight pipeline but not on the pumps so hydraulic pumps are not applicable in bernoulli actually second thing is not applicable on your propellers your turbine your bed may anything where you have have a rotation your streamlined flow pattern is not there you cannot apply bernoulli you have to leave that section as it is actually you have to think what else can be done for that then uh, again air flow through a heating element just like a hair dryer something you cannot use that bernoulli again because there also you don't have a flow pattern another i mean the uh, constraint that where you have a deaccelerating flow where you have the diffuser or divergent sections sudden expansion on contraction there also you don't get all these flow patterns so you have to keep in mind where this bernoulli equation can be applied so these are the some of the examples where you should skip your bernoulli rest of the place you can you can apply actually fine so uh i just uh, told you the bernoulli uh there bernoulli i mean the applications then you have here something about your flow meters to so bernoulli application immediate use would be in there actually the flow meters there so flow meters in that case you have a full bore meters uh that i will i think i will complete in the next class because this will be a different part what i have put here
I have to put something more here. Uh, actually, uh, there are several questions that need to be solved. So, Bernoulli application derivations are there. Mm. Okay, next class we will uh, do this part actually. Fine, so in this uh, we will end up the Bernoulli part uh, there, that means uh, use and Bernoulli and uh, Derivation and cylindrical coordinates also. So I will see that particular part. So anything you want to ask here, till here actually, whatever we did today. Sir, uh, in order this meter, uh, sir, वहाँ पे sudden contraction नहीं होती क्या? Sudden contraction in orifice meter, yeah, it is. तो फिर sir वहाँ पे बनाली क्यों use करते हैं? हाँ या दस बार आई टोल्ड यू यूज करने के लिए वी डोंट हैव एनी अदर ऑप्शन हाउ टू कैलकुलेट सो देवरफॉर यू आर जस्ट पुटिंग ए लॉस कोपिसेंट आल्सो देयर ड्यू टू दैट द सर्टेन कंट्रैक्शन एंड एंड ऑल दिस यू आर टेकिंग यू आर पुटिंग बर्नोली फॉर फाइन बट एट द सेम टाइम यू आर यू आर हैविंग ए लॉस को you are getting a discharge coefficient. Discharge coefficient in orifice is not one, is 0 0.61. So that is the losses only because of that sudden contraction losses. So to incorporate that, we did based on Bernoulli, but to incorporate the losses due to sudden contraction, so we have put a loss coefficient term there, and only because of that, you got a concept there, a discharge coefficient and discharge coefficient for Bernoulli. It's only because of loss coefficient. Your pressure has been lost permanently. So 40% of pressure has been lost permanently. Therefore, your loss coefficient is not 1. In case of the orifice, it is the 0.61. It means 39% has went away. OK? So you drive based on the, the Bernoulli taking the ideality, but it's not ideal, as you, you know, we also know. It is the sudden contraction which gave the losses actually and to incorporate those the losses your loss coefficient in the uh, discharge coefficient in, in orifice is 0.6 per therefore it's not preferred okay okay yes so we will end up this class uh, here actually so tomorrow we will try to do uh, this thing in the flow meter part here Fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Well.